Good afternoon, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. Doing a pre-purchase today on a 1990 Toyota FJ62 Land Cruiser. I'm starting to get rained on out here, so we're gonna move fast. I've been out here almost two hours going over the car. We got about 250 still photos. Not a car, it's a truck. Four liter inline six. Air conditioned, automatic. Sporting 195,000 miles. Automatic power steering, power brakes, telescoping, tilt wheel, power windows, and locks. Rear defroster, air conditioning I mentioned earlier. Original cassette and a sweet digital clock. beginning this inspection with the underbody because my blankets getting wet <clears throat> the front structure all along where the leaf springs mount there's no uh, physical damage a little bit of surface corrosion to be expected but uh, no impact damage that I can see these uh, front bumper bars look stealthy they don't look wrinkled pulled on repaired etc no real issues there Front and rear pumpkins both look just like that. No active leaks seen coming out of either of them. The truck's been here for a couple of hours. Underneath here, suspension's well greased. Doesn't look like there's been any recent activity uh, other than maybe these uh, stabilizer uh, shocks have been changed or upgraded, updated. Uh, nothing much to report left seems to be consistent with right. <clears throat> There's some grease buildup on the engine, but I didn't really see any active oil dripping. But again, nothing on the ground underneath the oil pan. Structurally, <clears throat> the truck looks good. I'll give you a left to right view or the purchaser uh, buying this vehicle, potentially buying this vehicle. We'll give them a little better look, but this is kind of what it looks like under here. Pretty solid and original. The exhaust system looks original all the way back, including that catalytic converter. So up front, all original. No frame damage in good uh, serviceable condition. Uh, back frame rail, I'm underneath the back of the vehicle. Left side looks good. Tail panel support, bumper mount looks good. Coming back to this rail. No crush, no pull, a little bit of cosmetic, you know, peel and uh, just cosmetic deterioration. Leaf spring bushings look original. They got a little dry cracking, probably not too abnormal. Spare tire is missing from this opening. Uh, rear pig looks like it's in pretty good shape. May have even been serviced at one point. The cover looks slightly cleaner than the actual housing which has some uh, undercoating buildup on it. Rear sway bar links look original. Doesn't look like really anything's been uh, manipulated or uh, moved around that I can see. Um, structurally speaking up in the splashes, all, <clears throat> all very nice. Original uh, plugs present, backs of the wheel. Uh, tubs look nice. Actually, all the wheel tubs look about like that. Quick view over here. There you can see a nice, all the body bushings look that way front to rear. And then uh, this is all nice and solid. No evidence of rot or decay. Wheel tubs look the same. Squish up here. No active leaks from the transfer case. Uh, you know, a little bit of grease buildup, nothing too unusual. Um, the lines running down the floor, as you can see, has some cosmetic surface rust on them. Don't see any active leaks on the ground or running off the vehicle. If you took a long ladder style look up the side, uh, body mounts and the inner rocker structure all look very nice. Left and right. Alright, so we do have some rust on the muffler 
and a little bit of a rust hole in that crossover pipe between the uh, catalytic converter and the muffler. So again, probably 1990, you'd probably have some rust holes too. Engine bay looks pretty nice and uh, unrestored, but uh, well kept for a driver. No physical collision damage back there in the headlight baffles. Uh, the core support looks like it's never been touched, touched, moved, bumped, etc. It looks all good. No real evidence of structural down there. I got still photos of all that for the prospective buyer. And the same way left to right, nothing to report that I can see from the collision perspective. That's that four liter inline six. I think they were like 160 horsepower. They weren't, they weren't big and stealthy. Um, transmission fluid is full. Doesn't look like it's been changed in a while. I'm gonna drive it in a minute and see if we have any uh, issues. The uh, dipstick down there, I pulled it. Oil's in good shape. Looks like it was recently changed. Almost a half a quart to the plus side. Uh, radiator core looks pretty original. Uh, let me see if I can get a shot of you. There you go. Looks pretty original. Um, didn't see any antifreeze beneath the vehicle. Uh, fuel injected unit. So uh, I'm sorry about all the wind noise, but I can't control it. I'm just happy it's not snowing. This rain is kind of feeling cold and turning to snow. Let's go around the outside. Easy to report that all the gaps look consistent because there's really no wreck damage to be uh, concerned about in my opinion. There is uh, small paint chips, uh, leading edge chips, and I'm sorry because it's raining out now and it's cold out here so you can't see them as easily on this, but I did get some good still photos of them in advance of the rain coming. The buyer will get those. Here's a peek at the exploded view that the buyer can actually freeze frame and kind of study. Uh, the general idea here is that uh, the digital paint meter I had between 3 and 5 all over the vehicle, that's great, that's OEM readings. There's a small wrinkle there in the bumper where this corner got pushed in at one time. Um, there's many small paint chips and nicks and various little dots throughout the vehicle. They were fairly numerous. There's a couple little chips in the windshield and one kind of rock style bullet on the driver's side. Got a half inch little rust spot down here. It's a surface rust spot on the bottom of the driver's door corner. A little touch up paint action has gone on around here in the wheel well. And there's a little touch up paint, oh, right about here that I didn't mark on the exploded view, but I'll show in a minute. We got a small little ding and a rust spot, kind of a little crack chip uh, right there on the tailgate and um, a little cut in the bumper pad. Physically, that's what we're looking for. Uh, but as we come outside, none of that stuff is really evident. I'm not going to bore you with paint gauge readings because that's what it is all the way around the vehicle. Three, three to four. Um, the chips are really, really small. There. A little bit of a door ding right in here somewhere. The reflective quality of the paint, it's OEM paint and it still looks really nice. You can see nicely in it, but we got a few little hairline scratches, a couple little chips down here, a couple along there. But if you back up from five to seven feet, which is about where I'm at right now, they don't pop right out at you. I think for OEM original paint, if that's what you are looking for, at 195,000 miles, I'm not sure you could ask for much less paint damage. Uh, the buyer will ultimately have to be the judge. The vehicle's really nice and straight. Very few marks in the in the you know in terms of door dings or or uh, casual damage, and you can see it's got nice reflection. There's a little bit of cosmetic touch-up paintwork down here that was kind of blended in. I'll hold that there for a minute so it can be studied. It looks like the color match was pretty good. Kind of fogged in to probably just touch up an area. We see a little bit of that you know, right in here too. All the trim on the car is all OEM original. Little paint fade noted on the uh, rear fence. 
The lenses are all in nice shape, really nothing to report. Small ding in the rear bumper, a little bit of oxidation around the bolts and whatnot. Nothing too dramatic. Some age fatigue and cuts in that bumper corner. Other than that small ding and that little cut in the bumper corner, there's really nothing to report there. This side is basically more of the same, identical with condition. A few little Nix chip scratches. A little bit of a blending color right here up over the wheel well. A little touch-up paint. And can you see it? You probably can right here. could probably even be masked off and re-blended a little bit again. And again, a few small little chip, chip, chip. I think the, I think the idea is coming through. Little cuts, little rub mark there. We got a crack in the bezel. We got a bullet. All right, and a chip. But again, peeking down the side of the vehicle. Very nice, very straight. Good for OEM. Okay, a little bit of chrome peel on the headlight bezels, all of them. Grills in pretty good shape. Let's go through the interior. Front bumper is real presentable, even with that little ding by the tow hook. Kind of pulled in down here, probably because it pulled the bumper corner back a little bit and uh, probably bumped right there when it happened. Tires are in great shape. Chrome wheels are all in great shape. No curb scuff noted, and there's 80 or 90% of the tread left on them. So far we've covered paint and body and trim and bumpers and suspension and engine bay. Back here in the rear compartment, everything looks pretty stable. No excessive wear, a few little uh, cut marks and whatnot. In indents in the uh, vinyl covering on the back floors. Matching spare, brand new tread on that, and the original tool kit. Headliner is nice. Let me lighten that up a bit. No dropping or wrinkles, no burn marks seen. Looks so good. The door frames are awesome. Skin lips are all factory sealed and look great. And uh, no rot. Sometimes you see rot hanging out back down in here where the the tail panel frame is, but that panel's really, really nice and solid. So no issues there. The tailgate closes and opens nicely, fits well. The cosmetic oxidation, but uh, that can be cleaned up. So there's a few chips, but that operates properly. And uh, good presentation. A hey, Jack's home. A few small scuffs on the back of that fold down rear seat, but it folds down, so I would say not too abnormal. Rear seat cushions are in uh, pretty nice shape. They could be cleaned up just slightly. Maybe a little bit of pulling or pilling here and there, but I don't see any major cuts or tears or super bad soiling again. It's 190 some thousand miles, so you got to expect some level of wear. Fold down seat works. I'm not going to pull the bottom cushion up because we've already seen the. Uh... Come on, that seat belt doesn't want to uh, let go. All right. Sorry about all that. All the GMs look like this, so we won't spend time going through every single one, but that's what they look like. In good shape door corners all look like that like that that looks weird in the video that's body caulking whoops sorry that's kind of body caulking just some paint peel but it's it's solid I'll show one more just because that one didn't show very well and I want to be honest and fair uh, there we go they all look more like that door panels I didn't see any big cuts didn't mark anything down, giving some liberty for 190,000 miles. Dash is actually really clean, one small little scuff right there, but no major cracks in the dash pad. Actually, I don't even see any minor cracks 
gauge faces are uh, really clean, lenses are clear, steering wheel is very nice. I don't spell, smell any presence of smoke. Um, you see some soiling and some entry wear at that driver's seat and a little bit of wrinklage on the um, sun visors. For some reason my screen looks a little rosy there. I don't know why, but the carpets don't really have that effect and that I'm sitting here looking at them. Console works. Looks like it's in good shape. Closes nicely. All the seat belts are present. Shifter bezel's in good shape. No complaints on the inside. Driver's door really doesn't even show that much wear for nearly 200,000 miles. And then passenger seat, quick look. Nothing abnormal or unusual. The seats uh, recline back as they should, both sides, and they move forward as they should. Also worthy of mentioning is uh, business card magnets will stick all over the vehicle because the digital paint meter is reading 3.0. Um, I didn't bother magnet testing the rest of the vehicle because uh, magnets will stick anywhere that the uh, paint mill thickness is roughly 20 and under. They'll even stick a little higher than that, but as a general rule, they won't. Looks like maybe a woman's high heel based on the uh, giant hole in the mat and some uh, seat bolster cracking and entry wear and again 200,000 miles that uh, that wears better than General Motors cloth I can tell you that <clears throat> I'm a GM guy don't get me wrong okay upon the entry here's what the potential buyer will see and uh, general wear is kind of non-specific a little bit of wear in the carpet right there but Pedals are in good shape, under dash assembly, everything seems to be well sorted. It's uh, 52 degrees out on the pavement, it is 55 degrees on the motor. So uh, let's get her fired up. Ignition buzzer is working. Turn the key forward, we got brake, we got ignition, we got check engine light, seat belts. Tachometer, volt gauge is coming up. I've had the doors open, so battery's probably draining a little bit. Here's what we look like from a cold start perspective. Also noted before I, uh, I checked all the fluids, owner was concerned potentially about a, a head gasket issue. And we did a dip. I did a dip into the uh, reservoir. Didn't see really any major issues to be concerned of. Contaminated. A little bit of pulley noise up here up front. But the engine otherwise sounds quiet. Don't feel any uh, unusual shaking going on. Windows are all operable. A little squeaky. A 
operationally the power mirrors work both sides left and right the turn signals are flashing inside <clears throat> all the gauges appear to be functioning the wipers are working on all speeds the squirter is activating the motor anyway nothing's coming out it might be empty um, air conditioning's on rear defroster works rear wiper works power antenna up and down Uh, lighter is very clean and it doesn't want to push in so no wonder nobody ever smoked in here radio's not coming on not sure why clock is working headlights and tail lights are all in check uh, side markers might either be dummies uh, or uh, bulbs are out don't really know check the air when I return 56 degrees I'm not gonna let it run much longer because I'm cold All right, let's head out horn works by the way first shift second shift Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise I'm just about to wrap up a pre-purchase inspection on a 1990 Toyota FJ62 for a potential West Coast out-of-state purchaser. This video won't be released publicly until after he has had a chance to look it over, check it out, see what he thinks, and perhaps buy it or not. At which point then the video will become public. So by the time you watch it, this car is probably, this truck is probably sold. Um, steering feels nice. Uh, the brakes feel good. Everything's uh, pretty quiet. I'll be quiet when I uh, head back down this road another time or two. First to second. Second to third. Hands off the steering wheel. For the most part. And uh, suspension feels nice and tight. Nothing too excessively noisy or rattling here on the inside. The vehicle at this location is a consignment vehicle, so we can't take them out on the main road per the uh, rules. But we get a pretty good feel this way. First to second. Second to third jam on the brakes at about 45 or 50 up here. Hands off the wheel. Uh, no aggressive pulling, no pulsing. Brakes feel good. And it's uh, nice and quiet, even with that little bit of exhaust uh, leakage back there. Nice and quiet. No check engine light is on. We'll uh, activate four-wheel drive. I, gotta, I think i got to jump out and check the hubs here. Hang on. FJ's got manual hubs. Let's try that again. I didn't bother boring you checking all the signals. I did check them. I uh, didn't record it, but they all work. There you go. There's the horn. Can definitely feel the four-wheel drive engage. Not really recommended to drive it very fast on pavement, so we're not going to do that. I'll spin it around here, do a disengagement for now, and then we'll check the low. Definitely feel the engagement. We're already in second gear, and we're already in third gear. So a minute ago, I believe I was deceiving you. So I think I was still in high two. You can definitely hear the gears uh, turning now, so my apologies, I did that wrong. A 
I make mistakes look at a lot of cars hey I'm wrapping up a pre-purchase inspection hands off the wheel again stabbing the brakes again no hands no hands and uh, I would define this vehicle after about almost three hours here as a really nice original uh, survivor unit It uh, has nice uh, curb appeal, uh, despite it having a little bit of uh, nicks and chips and scratches. Large benefit to it being all OEM and uh, no collision damage. That's definitely a high point. Um, I don't think I would do any paint work on it. If I was going to buy it and make it a nice casual driver, I think I would probably use it just like this if it were me. I believe that that little wrinkle in the bumper, if somebody was crafty, since it's mounted right there, might be able to get a hook on the end of this bumper and pull it. It's probably aluminum. and probably pull that wrinkle out a little bit. Do a little touch-up paint work on it. That chip in the windshield, those are low. They're out of your line of sight. My line of sight's up here. The air temperature is, let's see, 56.4567. So it's going the other direction. So there's a chance that the air conditioning is not blowing cold. There's more than a strong chance that's true. But if you like heat, and I like heat today, then... Uh, we got it. All the controls are working freely. Take us out of four-wheel drive. All right, thanks for riding along. Cody, my man, I uh, hope it works out. If you got any questions, give me a call. If you need service like this, 800-301-3886. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, shooting another video, pre-purchase inspection and test drive, and uh, you know the whole nine yards, trying to determine what the vehicle is before a person purchases it and sends their money across the country or across the pond, as it happens these days. If, if you need some help like that, give me a call. We'll see what we can do. 300 guys on the ground nationwide. I'm really the only one that shoots these video inspections, but my other guys will write you a report and shoot you two or three hundred photos and take it for a drive and see what we can do.